So behind me is my big shallow aquarium. I've had this one for well over a year now and recently it's been rescaped into a South American inspired biotope. But for the past year I've been using the same light, never really had a, a reason to change it. Today we're going to change it though. So the light that I've been using all this time is the Skylight Hyperspot. This one is made in Poland, it's a Polish company and yeah, I think it's a great light. really like the design. Uh, we have eight spots, it's RGB, it's just really well built. I can't say anything bad about it to be honest. Now I'm a if it ain't broke don't fix it kind of guy, you know, so I wasn't really planning to make any changes to the light on the big shallow, but I also do like to try out new things and test new equipment, see if it's any good, review it on the channel, especially if we can make this hobby more accessible for people that are watching, you know. So today we're going to try out a new light brand that's actually surprisingly affordable. So today we're taking a look at the Week Aqua A series. Now, to be honest with you, I'd never heard of this brand before, but I checked out some of their models and the A-Series looks a lot like the very famous ADA Solar RGB. So this one kind of spoke to me. So today we're going to check it out. Now, full transparency, this light was sponsored. I didn't pay for it. This one was kindly gifted to me by Glass Canvas Shop. This is an aquascaping store based in France. And they currently seem to be the only shop in Europe that are selling weak aqua lights. So I'll leave their website in the video description. Definitely check that out. They have a lot of different models as well. Uh, this one is the, the flagship, the most expensive one, but they have a lot of very affordable aquarium lights as well. So check out the, check out the website, link in the description. Let's unbox it. All right, so quick look at the box. We have the Week Aqua A series. And to be exact, we have the A430 Pro. It's 120 watts, so it's a very, very powerful light. On the side, you can see that it comes in two different colors. So we have silver and we have black. I got the black version. And then if we move over to the back, we can see a few more of these specs. A430 Pro, 120 watts. It's an RGB UV spectrum. I don't think I ever had an RGB UV spectrum. And uh, we have 7200 lumens and we have 140 plus 20 LEDs. I don't know why they put it like that. So we guess we have 160 LEDs. I'm not going to count them. And then the size, which is not really important. All right, so let's open this bad boy up. See what's inside. We have ourselves a user manual. I guess we're going to look at that later. And then immediately we have the light. Let's take this out carefully. All right, here we have the Week Aqua A430 Pro. Well, if you're familiar with the ADA Solar RGB, you can see that this one is very, very similar. Almost identical, I guess. I've never really seen an ADA Solar RGB up close, but uh, yeah, this looks very, very similar see what else we have in the box okay i think it's actually very simple we have our plug eu plug we have ourselves a power supply if it wants to come out eu plug power supply oh, we have a little allen wrench as well and then underneath we have Two shades okay so that was a very quick unboxing yeah we have a light and we don't really need anything else so we have the light we have the two shades we have the power and the manual that's it super simple so first impression of the light is actually very good um, it just looks very well built i like the black color i like the design i mean it's very slim i think it's only six centimeters at the top here we have ourselves a nice little weak aqua logo on the side there it's very minimal very discreet i like that as well it's heavy. I mean, it feels quite heavy. I'm not very good at guessing weight, but two, two and a half, three kilos, something like that. So it's quite heavy. And the only thing I noticed is that some of these grills, um, some of them have a little bend to it. You can see over there, they're a little bit bent. And over here, they're perfectly straight. So on some, some of the grills are just not super neat. But I mean, yeah, it's small details. It's not really something that you're going to be looking at, so that's fine. So it's passively cooled, so it doesn't really have any fan. So it's completely silent, so that's nice. I'm not a big fan of lights that have active cooling, but the fan is just... I don't want any noise make coming from my aquariums, you know. Quickly swap that around so we can take a look at the LEDs. So supposedly there should be 160 in here. I'm not going to count them. So they're RGB, and I think it's protected by a little piece of plastic or acrylic slightly frosted just to make sure everything is waterproof i guess 
On the side here, we can see all the specs again, uh, and it's Bluetooth. So this slider actually works with the app. We're gonna take a look at the app later as well. Yeah, first impression is actually pretty good. So this A430 is the most expensive model from Wick Aqua. I think if you have to buy this one new, it's 300 euros. Sounds like a lot of money, but then again, if you look at other lights and other, from other brands, I think we can compare this one to the Giro's RGB Vivid. The Vivid 2 is like 400 euros, so it's 100 euros more expensive. And I mean, it does look identical to the ADA Solar RGB, which is 800 euros, I believe. So in that sense, this light is actually very, very affordable. Okay, so now that we've unboxed it, I think it's time we test it out. So now I'm just wondering how I'm going to mount it above the big shallow. I mean, we do have these steel cables, but that's not enough. I think normally this light is used with a light stand. So you know those aluminum or steel bars that you have above your tank that are usually like mounted to, to your cabinet. And then this just goes on top of that aluminum bar. Now this one came with a proper mounting kit so we had those steel cables going into the light and then it go all the way up to the ceiling and it had all these attachments that i could drill it to the ceiling and attach it there so it looks super clean but we don't have that with this light so i'm going to try and see if i can use this cable with that light i'm not sure if that's going to work though okay we've removed the skylight so now it's empty i think this was the easy part but I gave it some thought and I think I figured it out. I mean, we now have basically six cables to work with. I mean, these two short ones, that's what's used for the skylight. And then this longer one was basically just to adjust the height. But I think we can actually use this long one to, att to attach the weak aqua light. Because over here we have this little attachment. I don't know what is, how this is called, if it, if it even has a name. But there's two cables running through here. It's basically just one cable, but it's just one end, you know? So if we just remove one end and then attach the other cable in here do the same on that side i think that should work right here we go that's actually not too bad so this is just the first try so you have to ignore all the messy cables up there but i mean this is actually looking really really good i was expecting because the light is centered that the left side of the aquarium and the right side would be much darker. But as you can see, the entire aquatic section is like properly illuminated. So I'm pleasantly surprised by that. Now the only thing I don't like because it's centered, it's really blasting on the floating plants and it's really blasting on that piece of wood. I feel like it's kind of a bit of a waste of light, if you, if you know what I mean. So I'm thinking to move it more towards the left side and then on the right side, put a second unit. Yeah, I don't think I mentioned it yet, but I actually have two units. So shout out again to Glass Canvas Shop for being so generous. So let's put the second one up as well, see how that looks. That's actually much better, more towards the right side. And then we can put the second one up next to it. Now, if you're wondering why I'm struggling so much with this, it's just because I'm trying to do it this way. See if we have the manual here. See, normally you would just attach it to like this special bar that you can buy separately. But I didn't want to go that way because, I don't know, I think suspended from the ceiling just looks cleaner, looks nicer. So it just takes a little bit more work, but uh, I think the end result will be good. Okay, both lights are now up, looking good. They actually have been up already for two or three days. I just wanted to kind of familiarize myself with the app before we continue with this video. So I tried out the app, it's looking good. And I've mixed up the colors a little bit, mixed up the intensity. Right now we are running on 60%, which is actually quite a lot. Probably have to reduce it a little bit because we're not running CO2 on this aquarium. But yeah, these lights are super, super powerful. So far I'm liking the color rendition as well. I mean, the, the greens are really popping, the colors of the fish are popping as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with it so far. Now the cables and stuff is still a little bit messy, but it will do for now. Uh, ideally I would like to have both lights a little bit spread between it like a little bit of space between both lights but it just is the way it is right now i'm just really happy that i did not have to drill drill any more holes into my ceiling so so far we're doing good all right so let's take a look at the app i'm going to do the whole process from start to finish so let me share my screen with you guys so we're going to go to the app store i want to search for week aqua okay so we've downloaded the app so let's open it up uh, track my acti activity? No, I don't think so. So th the first thing we see is a menu, aquarium lamps, more and help center. So of course we need aquarium lamps. 
And then we need to add a device, of course. So we tap the plus button and it starts searching for devices. Now in the beginning, I struggled a little bit here because you just see a bunch of random numbers and yeah, I was like, what are all these numbers and where is the light? You'll basically see here a bunch of numbers and then there's also A430. This is the A430 Pro from Week Aqua. So we just tap on plus there. Then it asks you if it's 24 or 36 volts. Just go with 36, just press OK. And then after a little loading, now the app is basically, or the, the, the light is basically connected to the app. And then if you want to open the app, or if you want to open all the settings from the light, you have to click on apply on the top right corner, and then you'll see a green on and off button. So this way you can you know, turn the lights on or off. And if you just tap on the white square, it will get you into this menu. So this is basically the, the home page of this light. So we have four different modes, but I think for this light, we only use the B2.0. Uh, B2.0 primary mode and B2.0 advanced mode. So the bottom two modes we do not do not use with this light. So the primary mode is just the basic stuff. You can choose a different setting. So we can choose green, red, mixed, goldfish, arowana, coral, and ocean fish. Now the only thing I don't really like is if you, um, for example, if the light is on 50%, and then you tap a different mode. So now we go from ocean fish, we go to green. It immediately bumps up the intensity to 100%. So I'd really wish if, if I would now have the intensity at 50% and then I would swap to a different mode, it would just stay on 50%, if that makes sense. Okay, so we have all the presets on top. I, me personally, actually really like the mixed. I think it just looks very natural, just a very clean white color, not too overly saturated, not too green, not too red. Yeah, mixed is my personal favorite. Below all the presets, we see the brightness intensity, kind of speaks for itself. And what I think is a really cool feature is that we also see the current spectrum. So I haven't seen it yet with, yet with other apps. So right now we have a very balanced spectra, spectrum, a lot of red, a lot of green, a lot of blue. If we swap to the red, you can see that the red spike has gone up a little bit. So that's, yeah, I think that's a pretty cool feature. Below the spectrum we see cooling, but it doesn't really apply to this light because this light doesn't have any fan. Then below the cooling we see the timer settings, so here we just have a simple on and off switch. And we also have the sunrise sunset. I actually haven't tried this yet, but here you can just choose a time for when you want the light to turn on. So I always like to turn on my lights at 1 o'clock. So and then we also choose what time we want the lights to turn off. So usually for me that's 9 p.m. So 8 hours, 8 hour photo period. And then we just tap OK. And that's it, super simple. So that was the primary mode. And then we can also check out the advanced mode. So advanced mode kind of speaks for itself. Here we can really customize the, the light and the different colors to our own personal preference, which is something I usually never do. I usually just go with one of the presets. But if you're, kind of, if you're into that, then you can really go all out here. So you see all the different spectrums, the red spectrum, the green spectrum the blue, the UV, and the white. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the video, when we did the unboxing, they said 140 LEDs plus 20, something like that. And I didn't really, I didn't really get why they did that. But it's because the 20 are actually the UV lights. So the 20 UV LEDs are separate, and then the other 140 are basically LEDs with every single color inside them, so they can just be mixed. So if we turn on the red a little bit, so that's 5% uh, red. And if I then add 5% green, you'll see that the colors are just start mixing. So then we also add 5% blue. And now we have a bit of a blue, bit of a purple tint to the color. So in the advanced mode, you can really like customize the lights to the perfect amount of color combination that you like. So that's pretty cool if you're into that kind of stuff. And then below that, we also have time programming. And I'm guessing that this is if you, if you want to go really crazy and you want to start the light with a certain color combination and like during the day you want to transform it to a different color combination. So I guess in this time program you can really go all out with your creativity. But I like to keep it simple, I'm just going to choose the mixed program, stick with that and just change the intensity as needed. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now before we wrap up this video we're going to do one more thing to really test the quality of these lights. Now I don't really feel qualified to talk about this, but we're going to do a part test. 
So PAR stands for photosynthetically active radiation. And this is basically the only way to really test how well the light, how good the light is at growing plants. So normally we talk about watts or we talk about lumens, but those two things really, they don't really say much. I mean, you can have a lot of watts, you can have a lot of lumens, but if it's not the right spectrum, then it's not really going to do anything for your plants. So I managed to borrow a PAR meter from a friend of mine. So basically we have a sensor and then here we have a little uh, remote that basically shows us the number. That's all I know about it. So again, I don't really feel qualified to do this, but I'm sure that there's going to be some people watching that are very interested in this. So let's just give it a try. I'm going to bump up the light to 100%, both of them. So they're at full power. And then we're going to drop the sensor in the water, test the value, see what it's like. Okay, so both lights are now on full power. You can see how bright it is. I'm going to put the sensor in the center here. I think this is the lightest spot in the entire aquarium. So all the way on the bottom. Can you guys see that? 170. So I was just reading online and I think, I think somewhere around 30 is considered low light. Like between 50 and 100 is considered medium and anything above 100 is considered high light. So 170 at a depth of 30 centimeters, I guess, a little bit less, of course. With the light suspended, well, I think they're suspended like 60 centimeters from the top of the aquarium to get 170 i think that's uh i think that's pretty good actually now so far i've been very positive about these lights but there is actually something that i do not like i mean in a way it's good that they supply these shades i mean I'm, i think that's a good thing normally with other lights you kind of have to buy them separately but in this particular situation with my shadow tank and with these lights really suspended quite high um, they don't really help i mean if i'm sitting at the tank kind of from this height you know, the light is still hitting my, hitting my eyes and it's still quite painful. At night, I like to sit on the couch here, watch some TV. So now I'm actually looking at the tank from the side. So I don't even have the shades from the side. And then it's just not really pleasant for your eyes, you know. And I did not have that issue with the skylight. I don't think there is a, a way to fix that with these particular lights. But yeah, I just wish I didn't have to like put on sunglasses if I want to look at my aquarium, you know, if that makes sense. But yeah, I think besides that, I don't really have anything negative to say about this light. I mean, maybe the app, I think the app could use a little upgrade slash update. It's just looking a little bit old school. They could modernize the whole thing a little bit. But yeah, so far my first impressions are quite good. I like the build quality. I really like the light color customization. I'm really happy with the mixed preset. It just looks very natural. So I think in terms of value for money, this is a really good light. I mean, I've only been using it for three days, so I can't really say much yet, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by it. So I think that's it, guys. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of these two lights. Would you prefer this or would you prefer the Skylight Hyperspot? That's it. Thanks for watching. Again, shout out to Glass Canvas Shop for sponsoring these lights. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Take care.